Hey guys, Akil here. Welcome back to part two of the building a Forex strategy series presentation. I don't, I don't really know what to call this, um, but thank you guys for joining. If you are brand new to me, my name is Akil Stokes. I'm a former struggling trader for a very long time, turned consistently profitable trader, money manager, trading coach, and I'm also one of the co-founders of tier1trading.com. And this is the second part of a series where essentially what I'm doing is I'm vlogging my way and, and walking you guys uh, through the process of developing a strategy. So if you haven't seen the first one already, make sure you check it out first is that's going to kind of set up um, what you're going to hear in this one. But in the first part of this series, we talked about kind of what goes into developing a strategy. And I showed you guys the baseline test. The baseline test was testing the initial hypothesis of, you know, kind of my, my theory, seeing if it worked with very little altercation. So um, not testing out different entries, different exits, uh, kind of the, the stuff that we add on later, just kind of the, the bare minimum does my idea on what the market should do if this happens, does that work? And I showed you guys the curve. Um, I also told you guys that I tried uh, a bunch more times earlier in the winter and failed and failed and failed and failed and failed. And then I finally came across something that worked. However, it didn't work in the way initially, and I didn't expect it to, um, but it didn't work in the way in, in which I wanted it to. The, the end result was good, but Somewhere in the middle, as you guys should be seeing right now, if I edit this uh, correctly, somewhere in the middle was a massive drawdown where essentially all of the gains from the first, I think like 80 trades were given back and it took me all the way to break even um, before going on a, a massive heater later. And although many traders look at the end result saying, just the end number saying, oh, that end number was awesome, you got to look at the process that it takes to get there because unfortunately, you know, Many traders, there's a very high failure rate in trading. 90 plus percent of traders fail um, or kind of just break even and exist in, in mediocrity or whatever like that. Um, but what a lot of traders do, and this is why a lot of traders fail, they don't look at the big picture. They look at the small picture. They, maybe they look at the end result and saying this system worked perfectly, but they don't see kind of the, the big give back in the middle. And in real life, during that give back in the middle, that's when a lot of traders blow their accounts. So they may start off good. They may start off hot. They may do some dumb stuff like increase their position size, um, not buy strategies just because they want to make more money. And then they hit that drawdown, they blow everything and they never make it to the fact or to the point where their strategy starts producing massive profits. So that's something, not that I'm in, you know, I'm not in a situation where I would do that, but I don't want to give back whatever 80 trades worth of gains all the way to break even. That's just not smart. Um, so the system did show promise, but it didn't work the way I wanted it to, um, which wasn't a bad thing because I kind of knew exactly what I needed to test in order to get it working. And, and I, I, I thought I knew, I should say, because um, what you're going to see here is I tested a few different qualifiers and filters um, and none of them really worked well into the, until the very last one, which I actually did by mistake. And I'll explain that in a little bit. But first and foremost, so a qualifier in a filter is basically uh, um, another test that the market has to pass for you to enter the trade. I mean, I'm trying to say this in the most simplest form possible. We always talk about on the platform, look for your reason for entry, right? There, there's one thing to have a good trading opportunity. So an opportunity where you predict the market is going to go bullish, um, but you have to wait for your reason for entry in order to execute it, right? Um, again, the many battles about this, we talk about, uh, I always say you wanna be predictive in your reaction, or excuse me, predictive in your analysis, reactive in your results. And that means that you're predicting if this happens, right, then the market should do, should do this. And this is just based off of historical data and you know your knowledge and experience and intuition on what the market should do when this specific occurrence occurs. Um, however, you're not just automatically taking the trade right there and then you're waiting for confirmation. That's why I say reactive in your result, in your execution, you're reacting to something that the market has shown you, which should give you the probability that your prediction is more likely to be right than not be right. 
Um, and that's something that we, we call, you can add filters to it. Basically, you're adding things. It could be an entry reason. It could be an indicator. It could be who knows what. You're adding something that provides you confirmation, an extra clue that the market is likely to do what you anticipate. And the idea of that is to get rid of some of those losses, right? Because you're going to have some losses where that filter, that qualifier never takes place. And therefore, you know, without a qualifier, you're in the trade, you take the loss. With the qualifier, it kind of filters out some of those losses um, and you never end up being involved in the trade. Now, there are pros and cons to doing this. And this is from my experience, a personal experience, obviously. Um, but it's also with my experience working with too many traders over the last, what, 10 years or so. Many people assume filters and qualifiers are just positives, meaning the more I add, the better results I will have, right? A key, I, I can get, you know, uh, you know, addition by subtraction. The easiest way to gain more profit is to eliminate those losses. And, and that is true to a certain extent. But understand this filter that you put in, it's not just going to filter out losses, only losses, unless it's super amazing. It's also going to filter out winners. So you want to find that balance where, yes, you're filtering out those losses, but you're not necessarily sabotaging your winners as, as well. And, and that was kind of the issue that I had um, when I went through the first three. So I did three initial filters and qualifiers. I, I thought I had a good idea on what I wanted to do just based on the observations that I made during the 11 years of initial back testing. And again, that was just the eye test. However, when I put it to test, um, I didn't get the result that I expected. It was kind of an emotional, and not that I got too excited about it because I don't get excited at all. I, I just shared uh, some results on social media from we're going to talk about it in part three of this series and people are getting excited to say, oh, this is going to be awesome. Mikhail. I said, eh, you know, I don't I don't know. Too early to tell. I'm kind of a, a pessimist in, in that uh, that perspective, mainly because I, I know how strategy development goes. I, I know kind of the emotional pulls of you get really, really excited and then it fails. And, you know, I just always assume it's not going to work. But anyway, as I digress. I thought I knew what I was doing with the filters and they really didn't give me the benefits um, that I wanted. Now, before I show you a chart of these numbers, I want to talk about something else, right? And I'm all over the place because this is unscripted, so just bear with me. If, if you're new, this is how I am. I, I don't rehearse this stuff. I just get on the microphone and spew. But in the first, um, in part one of this series, we talked about, or I talked about, the benefits of manual uh, manual testing, manual back testing, meaning going through the charts bar by bar. If you're on trading view, you can use bar tick replay. It makes life a lot easier. Um, looking for opportunities that meet whatever you're testing. And the negative of that is that it, it, it takes so long, right? You're literally clicking through bar by bar. Your, your finger starts to jam up and cramp. Um, and it takes forever to acquire a lot of data where if you just ran it through a machine, boom, it'll spit it out to you right away. However, the benefit of doing that, and this is what you're not going to get by kind of the, the automatic backtesting, is you don't get those observations. And again, those observations are so important. Those are the learning experiences. For me, it's like it's, it's like being in an internship, essentially, where, you know, I'm just I'm watching what's going on in the office building and I'm learning and I'm learning, and I'm learning, and I'm, I'm picking up on on key things that are going to benefit me later. Um, that's what you get through manual testing and you don't get that through automatic back testing i'm sure you can kind of schedule to look for certain things but you, you don't get that kind of that hands-on approach to it which I, I think is valuable especially for trading psychology you see kind of the ups and downs and and how you would emotionally deal with it um but one of the negatives of manual back testing is that it is manual and human error is a big thing if you've ever back tested like i said not only does the the hand get tired but if you don't take crucial breaks, the eyes get a little bit lazy as well. Um, whether it's just looking at something on the charts or recording it in an Excel spreadsheet. And what I noticed as I was going through the previous test is that I made some errors, right? There were some losses that I, I forgot to put the minus in front of. Um, there was some wins that I forgot to enter to profit, right? Um, so I actually were, was able to find a, a few errors that I made, which reduced the results from that first test. So I think at the reverse, at the first test, um, the magic number, the total pips was, gosh, help me out here. Was it like 10,000, 9,000, something like that? It actually went down to about 7,000. Um, not that those pip matters, but it's important to have that because this is the baseline test. This is what you're comparing everything off of. So in front of you is the chart of the baseline test. You should be looking at trades, wins, losses, win percentage, profit, 
um, average win, average loss, average trade, average profit. Again, these aren't necessarily all important numbers, but trying to make these videos as as simple as possible for the newer type of trader. We'll, we'll do the complicated stuff on the platform later. Um, but you can see in qualifier number one, um, well, first and foremost, you'll notice that it reduced a massive amount of the trades, right? Originally in the baseline test, there were about 235 trades, right? Qualifier number one took it down to about 74. Woof. What's that? Splitting it into thirds, basically. Uh, Two thirds of the trades I took were gone, were filtered out. Um, However, if you look at wins and losses, it didn't really make too much of a difference. It filtered out a lot of trades, but it filtered out just as many wins as as, as in losses, as the, the win percentage only went from 41% to 43%. Um, and you can look at the profit and, and, and whatnot as well. The, the average win was up. The average loss was also up. Um, the average trade was up. But because the frequency was lower, it actually didn't produce as much as the baseline test. So let me ask you guys this question, right? I know a lot of you guys are caught up on win percentage. Win percentage is better much less losses, almost a hundred less losses. But is this beneficial? Does it make the performance better? The real number you're looking for is expectancy. But again, we're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about that here because that's gonna confuse a lot of people, I think. But did this make the system better? No, no. So I went on to test number two. I was going to test all three anyway, but I went on to test number two. So, okay, maybe that'll make a difference. So qualifier number two, okay, didn't cut out as many trades, right? 235 for the baseline, 74 for qualifier number one, back up to 130 for qualifier number two. Okay, that's good. We keep a lot more wins. In comparison to qualifier number one, you can see we have 56 wins versus 32 wins. A lot of those wins came back. However, what also came back? A lot of those losses. And the win percentage was exactly the same. Now, it did filter out a few a few more losses. Um, you can see that the average win was up to 330. The average loss was back down to kind of what the normal was. Um, average trade was 46. So it did perform a little bit better. But again, is this anything that's going to get you excited? No, because again, it underperformed the baseline test, meaning that the initial test of what I'm doing performed better before I added anything. And then I tried number three. I, I, I kind of knew this one wasn't going to work, but I did it anyway. This was kind of like a double qualifier combining qualifier number one and qualifier number two. Um, and that chopped everything down to about 31 <laughs> to about uh, 31 trades total. Um, 13 wins, 18 losses. Win percentage still didn't change. Um, didn't really do anything to, to, to help the system. Basically, it was a waste of time, but I was curious about it, and now I, I know for sure that it doesn't make a difference. So if you look at these three initial tests, right, was I helping or hurting the performance of the baseline of the system, the hypothesis, by adding filters and qualifiers? Well, I was hurting it. Win percentage didn't change. Again, the, the key thing that I was looking for was to filter out some of those losses. Win percentage didn't change at all. So although I filtered out some of those losses, I filtered out just as much wins, essentially. And the pippage went down because of the frequency of, of the trades being taken. So by adding these qualifiers, I actually sabotaged my system. And, you know, it's not a big deal here when, when you're testing it, but... The problem is that many traders will do this without testing it. They will assume that, oh, I'm gonna add this and this and that, and I'm gonna make everything better, and they never test it, and before you know it, they make something worse. Remember what I mentioned in part one of the uh, the series where I talked about many traders think uh, developing a strategy is is as simple as finding an awesome YouTuber and strictly copying whatever they're doing. And then I said, what many of you guys are going to even do is you're not even going to, not just going to find a, a, a YouTuber or someone out there on the internet land or in a book um, with a great system, but you're then going to take that great system. You're then going to try and add something else to it. And then you're going to break it. You're going to make it worse, right? This is a perfect example of that for someone that let's say I was presenting you with the baseline system. I said, Hey guys, super awesome system, trade it this way. Don't do anything else. And then you get it and you say, you know, I'm going to add this and that because I'm going to make it better. And you never test it because that's what rookie traders do. And then you complain to me about how it's not performing well when you actually took something that performed pretty decently 
and you made it worse. And, and I bring it up because that, that is a real thing. I remember a long time ago with the, the previous um, company I used to work with, there was a mechanical system. Uh, matter of fact, <laughs> I, I traded one of these mechanical systems. Um, There's a mechanical system that came out and it was as simple as when the market gives you a green hour, do this. When the market gives you a red hour, do that. Right. Don't change anything. It's optimized. Just follow the rules. And we still had traders email us. Hey, the system is broken. It's not working. And we got to, you know, we talked to them, customer service. You know, well, what did you do? Well, I added this. And why did you add that? Well, because I wanted to, to add something to take away some of those losses. OK, well, did it take away some of those losses, sir? Yeah. How many wins did it take away? Well, it took away even more wins. Hmm. Hmm. You should probably just trade it the way it was originally tested. So long story short, excuse me, I'm going to cough real quick. All right, thank you. So long story short, I went through this entire process of, of going through all the data again, um, testing it three different ways, um, anticipating that I was going to make it better. Super excited about that fact, even though pessimistic on the inside. Um, and all I did was make it worse. So scrapped that idea and I went back to kind of the, the basics. And, and what I did was I actually went on to what I'm going to talk about in part three of this series instead of worrying about entries, right? Because this is these are qualifiers for entries. I decided to kind of change up what I was doing and focus on the next part of my journey, which was um, which was exits for uh, for targets. Right, there's three things in trading: there's entry, stops, and targets. So those are the three things we always focus on: entries, stops, and targets. I kind of look for qualifiers and different ways to tweak all three of those areas. And if you can do so, you're you're pretty much in a, in a, in a good spot. So I was failing on entries, so I decided to take a break. You guys know me; I like approaching things with a clear mind. I said, let's work on the next process. Let's play around with a few ideas I had on on um, on targets, on, on on targets and exits, and. As I was going through that process, right, again, this is the, the value of manual backtesting. As I was going through that process, I actually found something that I thought would work well for exits that didn't really work well for exits. But I noticed that, hey, this was actually a pretty good qualifier for entries. So after doing all that work, I went back and I tested what had failed on, on, ent or for, on, on exits, excuse me. And I went back and I retested it for entries. I, I, I didn't, I was like, huh, this might work. It's, it's, it's worth a try. Again, I, I'm a big fan of testing everything just so you don't have those, those lingering questions in your head. And I went back and I tested it. And here are the results, right? So the trades went down to about 110. So it reduced the trades by a little bit more than half. Uh, the wins, 52. Losses, 58. Um, but the win percentage went up to 47. So it went up about six percentage points. However, what's more importantly than that, because again, as long as we're above 40, I'm personally okay. I'd, I'd rather be like 50 and 60. I, I like to win more than I lose, trust me. But as long as I'm not under 40, I don't have those kind of those cracks in the arm or the cracks in the dam like I showed in, in part one of the series. Um, so 47% is fine. But more importantly is, is, is P&L, right? And I looked at the P&L and, and again, I want to ask myself, what is it doing to my overall trades? And well, the average win, it, it took it up from uh, from the baseline test, although it, it, it t took it down, I guess, technically from the, the test where I combined both of them. Um, but it also reduced the, the average loss a little bit. And the average trade, as you can see, was a lot higher. And most importantly, the total profit was higher, not only than testing both, not only than testing qualifier one and qualifying qualifier two, but also the initial baseline test. So although I chopped the frequency down, I was able to produce more profit. So I was a little bit more efficient in my trading. So I don't know if this is going to stay here, um, but it's something I'm certainly going to look into and, and I'm going to test I'm, I'm going to test this compared to the baseline and everything I test moving forward. I mean, I'm going to go back and do some of the other tests I did with exits as well using this new criteria and just see how it how it works. But it's more proof that, again, you know, a great trading buddy of mine said um, trading is a journey of self-discovery and meaning that it's 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 you learn a lot about yourself during trading, but you also learn a lot about the markets. And again, what I may have stumbled on um, as far as the qualifier that I want to use for my entry, I didn't plan on that initially. 
just like this whole entire system. I didn't plan on it initially. It just came up through observation, me paying attention while I'm testing, writing stuff down, taking notes, saying, hmm, I wonder what that would, would look like. And then testing it and be, hmm, or either, uh, not nah, doesn't work, like the three things I thought would work, or say, huh, we might be onto something. Um, and that's the, the most important message that I can give you guys as traders. You know, don't be in a rush through this process. Don't don't go through this process simply looking for answers. Right? Even if testing isn't going well, I still personally think it's worth completing just to see what else you may find. Because you may stumble on something that works great that could be used for later or can be used in a different system or can be used with something that you already have. You just never know. So it's always worth going through that journey, in my opinion. So I'm at part two right now, or, or I actually did part three. I'll record that in a little bit, but just to sum everything up, part one was the baseline test, the initial hypothesis of what I want to do in the market. Um, it did pass that test, seeing that um, the equity curve looked well. Um, the equity curve uh, ended where I want it to be, but it did need some tweaks in the middle. So after passing that initial test, I went to try to add qualifiers in order to clean up some of the junk in the middle. And again, after failing three times on what I thought would work, um, I went on to really go to part three, which is worrying about exits. While I was testing and having some pretty good success with part three, I stumbled across something that I thought would be good for, that I thought would be interesting to test for part, part two. So I went back tested it for part two, and it actually did end up kind of cleaning up the, the mess in the middle. And you should be able to see that with the comparison of, of equity curves in front of you. So now it's going back to part three. I want to test part three in, in, in a few different ways, right? Part three is, is exits um, for targets. I want to test it on the initial baseline because I actually had some really good success um, trading it with no filters for entry, but just making some adjustments with target taking. And I want to compare that to how those same adjustments would um, unfold with the new qualifier that I added. So that'll be pretty cool to see the comparison. And then part four, right? I'm getting really, really ahead of myself right now, but part four, we're probably going to take a look at exit te techniques. Um, I've all, I, I got to test this still, but I've also stumbled across really a, a different way that I may want to exit. This is, it's funny. The exit is what I was pretty, um, I was pretty confident about how I wanted to exit because during the, the initial baseline testing, it, it worked really, really, really well. And again, while I was testing different reasons for entry, uh, something that failed with the entry techniques, I noticed may actually be good for exits for a kind of a, maybe not a trailing stop, but a, a signal of when to get out of the trade because it's, it's, going to go against you. And, and that may be, again, I got to test it. I have no idea if it works or not, just off the eye test. That may be very beneficial for A, trailing stops a little bit tighter, um, which means I give back less as the market goes against me. And B, getting myself out of losing trades quicker. So again, reducing not necessarily how much I lose as far as the, the total number, but how much pip-wise I lose when I lose. And, and, and that could be big if I can drop that by, you know, um, a few percentage points. So I'm excited about that, but I guess we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves and, and, and just be, uh, be focused on part two, adding qualifiers. So again, do me a big favor. If you like this video, um, hit that like button. That's big for me. Also share this on social media. Um, leave me a comment or a question underneath as well. Um, I apologize for this one not being as clear, but it's it's New Year's Eve. I'm, I'm, I'm rushing through it because I, I got to host something for New Year's. And I don't feel like doing it tomorrow, um, but hopefully it made sense and, and hopefully it continues to illustrate the process and the mindset of, of, of what I'm doing as I'm going through this testing process. Um, for you guys that are on a tier one platform, I did get a question about this. They said, Akil, um, if this strategy does end up being successful, will you add it to the platform? Of course, you know, we don't hide anything. We'll put everything on the platform. Um, and, and hopefully if it all works out, you'll be able to see these strategy development diaries, um, whatever I'm calling it, Forex, building a Forex strategy series um, before I go on to explain the actual system, if it does work. And I think that'll be kind of cool to see everything that led up to it and then the final product. So I'll see you guys with part three. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss it. It should be coming soon because I've already done most of the work for it. It just comes down to me actually recording it. Um, 
And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, plan your trade, trade your plan. Have a very happy New Year's, even though by the time you're seeing this, it's already New Year's. But you get what I'm saying. All right, see you next time.